Right now, the hottest ticket in town for conservatives, new now gathering near Washington for CPAC. Several potential 2016 Republican presidential hopefuls among those making appearances, but some of the candidates facing pretty tough questions, even on them, what would they would consider to be friendly turf. Here now with analysis, Judith Miller, Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative reporter and author, and Cal Thomas joins us, syndicated columnist, both are Fox News contributors. So, Cal, you know, the approach here is a little bit different. Instead of uh, members of the media asking questions, you've got conservatives uh, asking those questions. How's that working out? Well, the presumption is that if a conservative interviews a Republican or fellow conservative, they're going to get softball questions. But as we've seen from Laura Ingram's uh, interview, and if you listen to talk radio, Rush Limbaugh, Laura's show, uh, Mark Levin, uh, Sean Hannity, they're tougher on Republicans than some uh, liberal journalists. So it doesn't always work out that way. But look, on the other hand, I don't think that conservative journalists or talk radio people have to prove their bona fides to the left. Uh, the objective ought to be getting information that the voters can use uh, to make wise voting decisions and, yes, to hold Republicans accountable to the promises they made. Yeah. An awful lot of conservatives think they're not living up to those promises that delivered them both houses of Congress again in the last election. Judith, my conservative question actually do damage to moderates, for example, and I hate to say this, you know, Jeb Bush, because a lot of people don't consider him to be a moderate, but comparatively, um, and thus doing more harm than good because a moderate might be more electable in a general election. Well, I have to agree with Cowell. I think the conservatives who've been interviewing fellow conservatives, and yes, I do consider Jeb Bush to be rather conservative, given his record in, as governor of Florida, but the conservatives are proving themselves to be just as tough-minded, if not more so, than mainstream or liberal journalists. And I think that they have an advantage in that unlike liberal journalists, who if they really questioned hard, the audience would be very much on the candidate side, I think now you have a kind of equal playing field where Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, Hugh Hewitt, these people have also constituencies and people will uh, support them in their effort to be as tough as they can be with the people who might lead this country. I think it's a, a very good development and I, th I don't think it's one that the Republican conservatives expected. Yeah, moderate versus conservative, I suppose that's a sliding scale and it depends it on indeed. who you're comparing Pairing it with and against. <laughs> yes. I want to move to our yes. second topic here. Um, the Attorney General Eric Holder will be granting exit interviews and has to several major news outlets. One network Holder is refusing to talk to is Fox News. The channel's executive vice president says the Attorney General's decision does a deep disservice to America's largest cable news audience and the interests of a free press. Cal, what about that? Um, is this because Holder just doesn't want to be held accountable or some other reason? Well, I think this administration, obviously, from their comments over and over again, hate Fox News. Uh, they barely uh, tolerate uh, the White House reporter for this network. And I think uh, the Fox executive, Michael Clemente, is absolutely right. Uh, why would he not come on the number one cable network in the country? Even President Obama has come on this uh, network, interviewed by Bill O'Reilly. Uh, the only reason I can think of is that he doesn't want to be held accountable uh, for his numerous statements about uh, racism uh, at the heart of the Ferguson, Missouri business and Trayvon Martin, and yet he has not, after a separate investigation, uh, decided to pursue uh, federal civil rights violation charges in either of these cases. So there was a lot of pol political posturing, but uh, when push came to shove, uh, he didn't follow through. So I don't think he wants to be asked about those things, and that's why he's not coming on Fox. Yeah, you know, Judith, um, Holder targeted the communications of our colleagues James Rosen, seizing emails Absolutely. and phone records and so forth, and then just two weeks ago, for goodness sakes, of the National Press Club. He lashed out, sneering at Fox News for talking about Islamic terrorism as Islamic. Um, so there's no surprise here that he's not going to talk to Fox. No, in, in fact, um, Home and Garden Network, I'm, uh, you know, I'm surprised HGTV, he didn't speak to them rather than to Fox. At least Eric Holder, for the moment, has is just ignoring Fox rather than attacking it the way the rest of the administration did for so long until they figured out that it was backfiring. But look, this attorney general 
does not want to answer questions about why he targeted illegally James Rosen, our colleague here. He does not want to account for the fact that despite the fact that the president has promised, had promised the most transparent and open administration, his Justice Department had been more secretive and has gone after leakers and journalists more so than any other attorney general. And the fact that he, his office actually told Fox News that it was the police political arm of the Justice Department that made the decision not to grant the network an interview. Now, what is the political arm of the, of the Justice Department yeah. and why does it even it, have it, one? It's not supposed to be a political organization. <laughs> right. Obviously, exactly. Chief Law Enforcement Officer of the United States. It's really uh, mind boggling sometimes. Well, well Greg, well, one indeed. more quick point. Sure. Actually, it was appropriate for him to go on Home and Garden Television because this administration <laughs> has spread around so much BS as fertilizer. I think it was the right network for him. <laughs> There's another word for that. But yeah, we can't well, say it. It's a family network. Yeah. yeah. All right, Cal Thomas, Judith Miller, good to see you both. Thanks. Nice to see you, Greg.